live from Atlanta, Georgia, it's theCUBE, covering Ansible Fest 2019. Brought to you by Red Hat. Okay, welcome back to theCUBE, everyone. Live coverage here at Ansible Fest. Two days of coverage, day one, wrapping up. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. Stu Miniman, my guest co-host today, our next two guests, Dennis Van, Van Velzen. It's me. Okay, <laughs> welcome to theCUBE. You're an engineer at ING Bank, That's and correct. Robert DeBach, uh, product owner, engineer, ING Bank. Hey guys, thanks for coming on. Thank thanks you. For me great for to have the practitioner on. Well, first of all, we have a lot of great feedback from the practitioners here and also people in uh, deploying Ansible and other, other cool DevOps tools. Yeah. And automation's at the top of the list. Yes. More efficient, getting things done, focus. Yeah. You got satisfaction in job because things Time go away. Saving. Time savings. Time savings. Security drives the conversation. Yes. And reskilling opportunities. A lot of these are cutting edge things. Mm -hmm. You guys are doing, take a minute to explain what you guys do, what an, I, what an ING bank. Yeah, uh, I work in a team that provides uh, Red Hat images for other uh, teams in ING to consume, to use, to instantiate. Uh, we also deliver some playbooks, some Ansible code and roles to, to manage those things. ING is very scattered, uh, which is sort of decentralized, which is a good thing in my opinion. It's, it's ready for scaling in that case. Uh, I used to work with uh, Dennis a lot in the tower team. Yep. So take it away. Okay, so uh, I still work at the Ansible Tower Squad. Uh, what we do is uh, we make sure that the Ansible Tower service keeps running 24 seven, and we also uh, ensure that we uh, uh, provide updates. Uh, and next to all this, uh, we also have an Ansible community where we basically support our uh, end users, which are there a lot. So um, uh, from some numbers I heard, we have like 1,200 application teams that are using our service. Um, and they all have like Ansible playbooks, Ansible roles, questions, difficulties with, uh, with, 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 with anything. And we are basically there to support them as well. So 1,200 teams are using Ansible yes. inside the bank. Yes. Yeah, they like it's, it? it's set up very decentralized, and uh, I think what I hear from Ansible Fest, that is not very common. Uh, I, I, I still think it's a very good thing to do. Uh, we try to basically give these teams uh, all the tools they need to do their stuff. Uh, and what I hear here mostly is that there's a central team of administrators pushing the buttons for them. Tower's great, Ansible's great in that case. I think for our case, it's really, it's a perfect fit. Yeah, I, I, I guess, Dennis, help explain. Is this, do you provide, you know, you said it's not centralized, but is this, you know, here's best practices, here's some playbooks, yes. how, how do you, and you support them? Walk us through a little bit those relationships. Uh, okay, okay. Um, so what we do is we basically have all the roles in Git, uh, in uh, a GitLab, so it's an on-premise uh, Git environment. And uh, you can search in this Git uh, for roles. Uh, not like all roles are easily uh, to be found when searching for them. So that's why there are these communities to share what you have made. Um, yeah. Yeah, plus these teams, they can themselves pick and choose. So uh, some will try to rewrite everything, that's fine. Others can, uh, can yep. benefit from existing code. So it's just a good trick to, uh, to enable all these teams to, to participate. Uh, yeah, and it really differs. Some people make it all themselves and others. And, and, and next to this, so uh, we basically have these 1200 teams do their own thing. Uh, but next to this, we also have a uh, self-service portal where they can choose like from uh, generic things like uh, OS patch your machine, uh, add new disks, so new capacity, uh, CPUs, memory, that's all being done through a portal. Uh, so they, they don't need to do anything on their own for this. They can, but most of them choose the easy way of using this portal. Uh, this portal basically do, does an API call to Ansible Tower, which executes a uh, Ansible playbook and some other stuff, may, maybe some APIs. And this is one of the things you guys uh, create and manage, these yeah. playbooks. So. Um, and if you go back in time, so the alternative way, uh, which we happily got rid of, yep. is to do it ourselves. I think it was before we, we worked together. Yep. Uh, we had patch weekends, for example, and it was no very, life. very difficult. You had no life. Oh, no, man. That's true. Working on weekends? Oh, yep. Yeah, weekends. And uh, for example, we used to patch machines, some 10,000 or so. Yep. And 
we were not aware what was important and what not, so you'd, you'd stop the whole patch, oh, this machine has a problem, let's stop everything and focus on it. Yeah, it's not important. It was like a complete order. Yeah. And like the other way around also, mm, this machine, I guess it's not that important, yeah. let's yeah. just continue. Yeah, Monday morning, oh my god, everything's broken. Can, can, can you give us a little flavor of kind of the, the spectrum of solutions that you, you leverage Ansible uh, on top yeah. of? Yeah, we, uh, the, I think what, what we see most is uh, for Linux machines, uh, so yep. patching is a big one. Uh, we, call, we call it secondary operations, so there's a few of them. Uh, the deployment also depends on Ansible, so if you order a new machine, Ansible is involved somewhere to, to, to make it happen. Yep. Uh, and we network uh, is onboarded. Yeah, uh, the no. Windows teams are very interested. No, I, I'm not sure if Windows is on board yet, to be honest. No, no, we did some uh, POC uh, in the past, so a couple of months ago, using uh, WinRM, and you needed to set some policies there. Uh, but you can see that the networking teams are getting more momentum. Uh, F5, <laughs> there, there's some uh, software, uh, software-defined uh, switches, but I, I don't know the, uh, what, never mind the name, but uh, you can see some momentum in the in, in the in the networking uh, networking departments. A lot of configuration going on in the network. Networking yeah. is where the action yeah. is. So That's yeah. where the action is in the yeah. network. Yeah, yeah, and um, there were some cool talks also here uh, on F5. Yeah. A um, workshop and workshops. So you can see there is um, th th there is some attention on these modules and integrations as well. What's your guys' goal here for this show? What brought you here? Obviously, a big user. Yeah. So what one of the here? things was uh, like sharing our own thing. We did a talk this morning uh, regarding uh, mob programming. Uh, really cool. We wanted to share this this behavioral thing and and what was it talk about? Take a minute to mob explain. Mob programming. So um, basically, it's uh, programming with the whole team and making sure that you uh, get something done uh, with all the knowledge in the team, so you don't have to align afterwards, or if, if some other, if, you're, if your uh, colleague says, fun, uh, basically says, fun, you can do it better using this thing, mm -hmm. it's, all, uh, it's, it's all done during the, the, the session. Yeah, it's basically a good way to get a team up to speed. So in a team there's probably a few, few people that are very quick and uh, understand the concept and a few starters or so. So you guys decentralize, which makes sense for scale, I get that. Mm -hmm. So this sounds like you can operate decentralize, but with Ansible you can still have that common yeah. yes. playbook yeah. or yeah. thread. People can switch yeah. teams for example, so it used to be very uh, specific. To each team would have their own type of code. Now that more Ansible is used, people can switch a little easier to, to another product or service because the, the, the language is at least shared. Still, it's still it's quite. So people difficult. happy with this, right? I, I, I am. I, I, You're happy. I'm really, really You're happy. Now we're on the weekend. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the good. The good thing is that you have one generic way of working. So yeah. this playbook is readable by all engineers. And if you want to learn this thing, you just do the Ansible course. So you know. Uh, what what this thing is a task and role and it's all like it's all. But, but a we do see uh, we do see horrible code here. Yeah, we do <laughs> still still. Oh come on! <laughs> but don't throw your colleagues under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> no, but here's the, I'm gonna ask you a tough question because here's what we've been hearing. I want you guys to test this. We hear that there's a lot of time savings involved. Yes. With Ansible, true or false? That's true. Yeah. Give us an added, or, that order of magnitude. What's it, what, kind of, what kind of savings we oh. we talking about? Uh, I think it depends on the the thing, because we we saw a huge. Uh, I don't know exact numbers, but uh, this this OS patching yeah. that really really. Uh, if I would saved guess now, OS patching was uh, two people work on it f full time, so yes. basically collecting who needs to do what uh, when, and then for a weekend, 10, 15 people or so. So uh, that's reduced now to sort of nothing. Yes. Uh, some maintenance to that playbook and role, but I mean. Yeah, it's difficult to express, but massive. So no one's getting phone call, hey, come in on the weekend, no. so 15 people on the weekend jam, no. and then two full-time people just managing it, all go away. Yeah. Not needed, but not needed, but they basically, they can do something else. Yeah. So these people are still there, but now they're not doing OS patching and doing all the Excel sheets and keeping order of, of these systems are important and this should be the first, and then they, because we are basically doing the thing they know better. This application team knows their dependency, so they know they that first they need to patch the database machine, and then they're doing the front end, or and and yeah. it's difficult to do this. So uh, they they do it themselves. 
That's so, DevOps. That's, supposed, that's the way it's supposed to be, right? Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> that, so you, you've matured this, these deployments over time. As you look back, what, what key learnings do you have that maybe you'd recommend to your peers to, you it, know, it, how it, things could yeah. run a little bit smoother next Give time? Give it a good amount of time. Yeah. So uh, there's tools, that's not the problem. So Ansible's great, but yeah. there's others too that are great. Uh, give it time to, to sink in with the people. So you start something you, and you have to have a pretty strong team to, to do the, long, the yep. long stretch with it and give it some time, maybe a year or so before everyone's onboarded. Uh, in our case, in the beginning, we spent lots of time on this community model where we basically organized small meetups or get-togethers to show things or to hear problems and, uh, and, and try to express that, them. That really helped. That helped a lot. And by now it's starting to get normal, more normal, so all the teams do Ansible basically and problems are slowly disappearing also, so yeah. So one of the things um, that uh, will be better, probably in our scenario, was keeping metrics. So what are the improvements over time? Uh, I don't know how to uh, measure this, mm -hmm. not in all as aspects, but it will be better if you had like better numbers, like we did here, very good, or this is something, uh, like what did the community thing bring? We yeah, know we, we indirectly focus. what the results are because uh, the engineers are doing things, real real things. They're really patching their application and they're really um, restarting their own machines, for example, when there's something wrong, whatever. Um, but are these related to our community thing or are these really related to Ansible Tower? Plus, I uh, think we, we are very technical focused, so so uh, we like it as a nerd, so to say, to do things. Yep. But what the business value is, for example, we're yeah not so interested or less interested, so we, we typically like the technology. So it could be good to have some someone on board in your team yep. that says, yeah, but this is the problem, this, it costs this amount of money and that's solved now or improved. Yeah. Well, you assume the applications are doing the good job, so yeah. you guys help those guys out, they get to do their own thing. Mm -hmm. They do the heavy lifting, they're doing the coding anyway. But for those guys that were coming in managing full time and the mm -hmm. 15 or so on the weekend, mm -hmm. what are they doing now? Uh, most are spread across all the application teams. So they go back so into but, their... But uh, the, the, the other side, there is now a tower team that was not there. Uh, so that's a price you have to pay. And it's that's a serious team. I mean, it's five, six people now, six I guess. People. Yeah, six people. And 100 machines or so. So it is a serious amount of time. Yeah but it makes it at least much more constant, so people are not surprised by machines being patched and oh my, they, uh, Monday they come back and it's half broken or so. So th th it's a lot more control now. So I don't know if you can express it in a price, but at least it's more stable. Yeah, yeah, more consistent. Great, well one of the things that we hear here and I want to get your thoughts as we wrap up is, as you go forward, you got Ansible, 1200 teams using it, you got a lot of collaboration, the work culture's changed, sounds like yep. you got a tower team set up to service everything else, so there's some scale building out. What's next? Because as it becomes a platform, okay. you have to enable yeah. something, there has to be value there. Okay. Technical okay. nerd value yeah. and then business value. Scaling. Uh, because we continuously see this thing growing, like more application teams are adapting Ansible and Ansible Tower. So, um, Right now we have uh, like a cluster, we have different clusters running. Uh, no, don't go into much detail, but we can see that the, the, the load is getting higher and higher. Um, so we need to scale. Um, and this is sort of difficult, but Red Hat is really supporting in this uh, because they're going to change some things at the, at the application level to, uh, to, to, to allow scaling even better. Um, Plus also for most teams, uh, they're starting their uh, configuration or everything as code uh, process. Uh, they're not there yet. As soon as they discover the power of it, I'm sure that it's being yep. used a lot, a lot more. And plus there's other countries that uh, are going to be connected, so yeah, that's true. Uh, you'll yep. have a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You guys are engineering, doing some getting down and dirty with the code, automating everything. Yeah, yeah so, um, what else do we do? What's the, coolest yeah. thing, what's the coolest thing you've done that you've automated? Um. <laughs> Pick your favorite so, but that, child. Uh, the, during Ansible Tower and with Ansible, um, let me think about this. I, think I, I really like the, the patching. That saved us so much work. And uh, I, I think also one of the next goals is to make much more simpler. So, 
we as a company we are complex and the people also like complexity uh, and that's wrong we yeah. should change that yeah. well, patching I think the power of Ansible is the simplicity so we should really use that you don't much, want any open more. holes in the network obviously and no. the systems no. yeah and about your previous question uh, like I have sort of a finger in all these small things so it's sort of what I did it's more like in a team thing like yeah. we created the OS patch playbooks the configure stuff the second day ops so we did this as a team. It's kind of like That's sports. Put the playbooks together, run the offense, yeah, yeah. play in, some defense in, on security. In more programming, <laughs> so you're doing this as a team, <laughs> which is very cool. How's the scoreboard look? Good? You guys winning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we're looking at the graphite uh, <laughs> thing, but uh, it's cool. Final question, how are you enjoying the show here? Having a good time? What's the vibe here? What's it like here? Share for the people who aren't here. What's going on? What's the vibe? What's the it's conversation? Great. It's great. We went to some sessions yesterday, really technical stuff with developers, and this was really amazing because you heard details that, that are not in the, in, the, uh, in the talks today and tomorrow. Um, yeah, it's great. It's a, it's a great community. It's just, uh, I, I, really, I really enjoy it because yeah. you, can, it's, it's, uh, you can have like one-on-one -on -one conversations, go into depth, um, I was showing something I created and these guys were, wow, this is really great and uh, it, it's cool. It's just, if you, yeah, if you, it's really great. It's really cool, right. really. Yeah, for me also, it, it feels like coming home. So I know these people and uh, I think the first day, of the, con the collaboration day, what's it called? I'm not sure. Community day. Community day. Yeah. That's, it's great because it's a bit, a bit rough and uh, unpolished and today is more polished and more yeah. presented and prepared. Yeah. Uh, both are great. Yep. Uh, it's Rough is good, you get nice to good, give the hard feedback. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> plus you meet all the people. So for example, I use Ansible a lot, and then on GitHub I see all these names, like who would that be, and they're walking here. Yeah, so yeah. you shake them a hand, so like, oh, oh that's you quite check impressive. Out the guys. Yeah, I like your code, looking good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. code yeah. looks good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but Contributor <laughs> Summit is what yesterday was. Contributor yeah. Summit, yeah. okay, yeah. sorry. Good. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for the corrections advice too. advice for yeah. anyone that goes to Ansible, visit that day too, it's just great. It's great to see people face to face that you know online yeah. through their digital identity or their code. And you can, and you can complain about stuff. <laughs> like without, and, and, and you know that you don't hurt them or something with just commenting on yeah. Git, like I have this issue and this issue and this issue, then you can see them in person and then you... Give them a high five. Hey, sorry yeah, to insult yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you know, or hey, this good is job. This and this is thank <laughs> you. And, uh, yeah. it's, it's really cool, really cool, really cool. Guys, great uh, conversation. Thanks for coming on the queue. Thanks. Dan S, appreciate it. Robert, thanks for coming on. It's CUBE coverage here. Day one of two days of live coverage here inside the CUBE here in Atlanta, Georgia for Ansible Fest. This is the CUBE. I'm John Forrest, Stu Thanks for watching.